prior to the singing of the national anthem, we will um, be blessing a new American flag, which is designated for our cemetery. Our hope is in the name of the Lord who hath made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and it shall be, world without end. Amen. O Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto you. The Lord be with you. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people chosen as his inheritance from the book of Psalms. My dear brothers and sisters, for as much as God has put into our hearts to provide this flag, an emblem of the United States of America, as a reminder of the freedom enjoyed under our constitutional government, a challenge to preserve to our posterity those ideas which have their source in God, and a symbol of the nation which under God we love. It is fitting and proper on uh, this Memorial Day weekend that we should now dedicate this flag, the symbol of our nation, to him who holds the nations of the earth in the palm of his hand and sets it apart for use as an insignia of our nation. To you and to your service, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we dedicate this flag. Let us pray, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who made all things. We ask that you would bless this flag. May all who view it in this place and at our cemetery be filled with greater appreciation for the religious and civil liberties which is ours, and be inspired by your Holy Spirit to steadfastly devout Devote ourselves to you and our beloved country. Grant that in the use of this flag, we may look beyond ourselves to the common good of freedom. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon this, our American flag, and may it bless those who view it now and forevermore. Amen. And now, let us sing our national anthem.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us. We will go into the altar of God. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to the God and prepare ourselves that we might be found worthy to offer the sacrifice of the Mass. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us recite the second confidior. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you.
on this Memorial Day weekend, we pray that you would grant unto us peace and justice, that we might all be inspired with your love which you give to us every day. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity with the Holy Spirit and art one God forever and ever. Almighty and the Lamb. 
The city had no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gave it light, and its lamp was the Lamb, the word of the Lord. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. According to St. John, Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives, but as I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or be afraid. You heard me tell you, I am going away, and I will come back to you, if you love me. For you would rejoice that I am going back unto the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
to lay down one's life for one's friends. These words are taken from the Gospel according to John, chapter 15, verse 13. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. How proper it is on this Memorial Day weekend to use these words of Jesus. Memorial Day is also known as Decoration Day. And it is a most important holiday that has been set aside to remember and honor those men and women who have died while serving in our armed forces. This holiday, which is observed on the last Monday in May, has been officially observed from 1868 to the present. Families and friends will gather at cemeteries around the world and place millions of American flags as well as flowers at the grave sites of those who paid the ultimate sacrifice in defending our great nation. Special services, parades, and speeches will also mark our tribute to the memory of the fallen. The practice of decorating soldiers' graves with flowers is an ancient custom, and soldiers' graves were de decorated in the United States before and during the American Civil War. According to a Richmond Times Dispatch newspaper article in 1906, Warrington, Virginia, on May 3rd, 1861, was the location of the first Civil War soldier's grave ever to be decorated. According to the Savannah Republican in 1862, women in Savannah, Georgia, decorated Confederate soldier's graves. The 1863 Cemetery dedication at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania was a ceremony of commemoration at the graves of fallen Union soldiers. Some have therefore claimed that Lincoln, who gave his famous Gettysburg Address, was the founder of Memorial Day. In the North, by 1870, the remains of nearly 300,000 Union soldiers had been reinterred turned in 73 national cemeteries located near major battlefields, many in the South. The most famous of all these resting places today are Gettysburg National Cemetery in Pennsylvania and Arlington National Cemetery near Washington, D.C. In Arlington, there are over 400,000 soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and members of the Coast Guard who lay at rest. It is interesting that at Arlington there is a Confederate memorial where the remains of 482 Confederate soldiers are interned. Arlington became a Civil War burial site in 1864, but it was not officially acknowledged or dedicated until 1901, when President Woodrow Wilson dedicated a plaque to the Confederacy. In the South, on April 25, 1866, the ladies of Columbus, Mississippi, laid flowers on the graves of both Union and Confederate dead in the city's Friendship Cemetery, claiming to be the first official Decoration Day, which was to become known in later years as Memorial Day. 
We find that in the year 2000, Congress passed the National Moment of Remembrance Act, asking people on Memorial Day to stop and remember the fallen at 3 o'clock p.m. On Memorial Day, flags of the United States are raised to the top of the staff and then solemnly lowered to half staff, where it remains until noon. After that, the flags are again raised to full staff for the remainder uh, rem of the day. There is also on Memorial Day an annual Memorial Day concert that takes place on the West Lawn of the United States Capitol. This concert is broadcast on PBS and NPR where thousands gather, including many disabled veterans. Music is performed, poems are read, and all pay respect to all men and women who gave their lives for their country. In 1915, following the Second Battle of Yeps in Belgium, Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, a physician with the Canadian Expeditionary Force, wrote a poem entitled, In Flanders Fields. Its opening lines refer to the fields of poppies that grew among the soldiers' graves in Flanders. In 1918, inspired by this poem, Mona Michael, who was a member of the Young Women's Christian Association, who was an, attending an overseas conference, wore a silk poppy pinned to her coat and distributed over two dozen more to those present. It was in 1920 that the National American Legion adopted the poppy as their official symbol of remembrance. And so, my brothers and sisters, on this Memorial Day, may we all pause and remember that this day is not a day about commercial cells, and not just about picnics, but rather Memorial Day. For it is on Memorial Day that there is a solemn observance remembering the sacrifice of all those who have given us the opportunity to live in a great nation dedicated unto God. Let us also keep on this Memorial Day our prayers for all disabled veterans as we gather at our cemeteries and at various celebrations. And finally, let us keep in our hearts the words of Jesus, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes. 
seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. with a loving kiss. Peace to all of you who are in Christ. Alleluia.
Through Christ we pray this day. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we offer you this sacrifice, may we dedicate ourselves to continue the heritage that you have entrusted to us as we remember those who have given us their sacrifice for our freedom. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, 
draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking the excellent chalice in his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do these things, do them in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant, Abel sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice in an act of grace. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we, who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar, may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servant David, as well as all those who have given of their lives in defense of our nation, who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and who now sleep in peace.
intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day. Supported by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and are to God. Forever and ever. What shall we return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen.
by this Holy Communion, instill your peace and love in our hearts, that we may be faithful disciples of your innocent Son, through Christ Jesus our Lord. We are united with our Lord Jesus, who rose from the dead. May our brother David, whose anniversary we honor this day, be joined with you in the new Jerusalem, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, most gracious God, we have received the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, on this moment of the weekend, as we draw close unto you, we pray for those veterans who have honorably served in the cause of freedom and justice. May perpetual light shine upon those whom you have called before you. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God, forever and ever.
I'm going back to Woonsocket. I just came back from Woonsocket on Friday. So it's become like a second home for me uh, for a meeting of the Eastern Diocesan Liturgical Commission. I'll be returning later in the afternoon and that evening at 7 o'clock, uh, our parish committee to meet. I bring to mind that this coming Wednesday at 7 o'clock, which will be the last Wednesday of the month, may devotions to our Blessed Mother. I bring to mind that on Thursday is the 40th day after the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is the ascension of our Lord. Removed from the altar will be the glorified cross, the statue of the resurrected Lord, and our Paschal candle. We will actually, in 10 days from Ascension Sunday, gather on Sunday to celebrate on the 50th day following the resurrection of our Lord, Pentecost. I bring to mind that on Saturday, I will be traveling to St. Casimir's Polish National Catholic Church in Lowell, Massachusetts for a meeting of the Eastern Diocesan Council. And next Sunday, the last Sunday of Easter, Holy Mass at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock fellowship hour. What I'd like to do, if everything goes well, is that when we gather for the fellowship hour, I'd like to go over a few things. Not only my recent trip to the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area for the National Mission and Evangelism Commission, but also what took place at the Eastern Diocesan Council meeting, and also in October of this year, there will be a special synod that will be convened in Scranton, Pennsylvania for the purpose of nominating and electing bishops to our church. Is there anything I failed to mention? Then if not, please enjoy your Memorial Day. I can tell that things are getting better because things are warming up. Mm. And so, I'm not going to take any more of your time. Let us remember in our prayer, our prayers at the foot of the altar, not only our brother David, but also for all deceased veterans who gave of their lives in defense of our freedoms. May God bless all of you, keep you safe. Yet bench of Buffalonia is a solicitous. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for the repose of the soul of our late departed brother David Rappley, as well as for the repose of the souls of all veterans who gave of their lives in defense of our freedom. Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.